In this part, I want to show you how to create materials from photographs using Alchemist. This is helpful for when ArcVis clients give us a reference material that they would like to see in our scene, and we need to convert it into a usable 3D material. I will also show you how to export the material out of Alchemist and into 3ds Max using the Substance plugin. Now the scene is very indicative of an architectural visualization scene or project that I would work on, and it's been modeled using references and designed with the help of some friends from Black Print Interiors in Newport Beach, California. All right, so let's just jump right in. I wanna show you guys the scene that we're gonna be working with in this series. It's just this simple kind of lobby. We have lights spilling in on the sides, and if I go back to my view here, we've got some simple IES lights set up. Now, the biggest thing to push photorealism, I think, is lighting and materials. All of the materials that are in this scene at this point have been created in either Alchemist or Painter in a tileable fashion uh, and just kind of scattered throughout the scene. So the first thing I want to cover with you guys is how to create a texture, a tileable texture, from an image within Alchemist and how quick and easy that can be uh, when using uh, Alchemist's uh, algorithms to do this. So let's jump over and I'll show you guys how we're going to achieve that today. All right, now that we're in Alchemist, we're going to go to the left here and click this little Create New tab. Now we can name a project. What this is going to kind of be is a folder that's going to be holding all of the materials that you will create for a specific project. So if I just name this Lobby, and we'll leave this workflow at a metallic roughness. You can choose Spec Gloss if you need to, and we'll click Create. Now, just a quick little tour of Alchemist. We're going to have uh, some kind of starter materials that we can play with, um, materials that are imported over from Substance Source, and then we're going to have all of our textures that we're creating down here at the bottom. But what I did is I jumped online and found a reference image of Stackstone that I, I really like, and we're actually going to use this image to create our material, leveraging Alchemist's AI algorithms. Now, this image I was able to upscale up to something I think like 4 or 6K, the more information that we can give Alchemist, uh, the better. So if you're doing material creation from photographs, if you're doing like kind of photogrammetry, just make sure that it's the highest resolution you can with no compression. And again, that'll give Alchemist uh, more information to work with. So all we need to do, if I move this off the screen, is we're going to hit Create. And on the right here, it's going to ask you to drag in your image. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Drag this in. And it's going to give us three options. The quickest, kind of easiest one is this bitmap to material. This is if you ended up taking multiple images with multiple light sources in a certain pattern. But this kind of is the quickest and easiest one to do. If I click that, Alchemist reads the image and gives us kind of this quick and dirty material. Now, this isn't perfect or great by any means, but this is a great place to start. We can kind of refine this material and get it to where we want it. Alchemist has a bunch of these filters that we can use to do that. So we can either click here on the left and say filters, and this gives us all sorts of things like generators for brick patterns, um, to help us with that uh, scan processing from photogrammetry. A lot of what we're using is tools and maybe even a little bit of weathering as well. We can also access this menu by hitting space on our keyboard, and it brings up just a search option. I'll kind of go between using the left side and just hitting space and finding the materials that I need. So the first thing I want to show you guys is under bitmap to material, we have a way to play with the height settings. And this kind of can kind of be just how the image was taken. So if we look here, I'm going to go down to luminance base and we're going to say slope based directional light. This kind of works a little better for the image that was created. If we have less shadows, we can change this to luminance based overcast and it would do a little better job of kind of getting this texture set, uh, set up correctly. And then we can mess with some of the AO settings here, like how big the material is how much it's going to self-include, and then at what depth that's going to be. So something we just got to kind of play with depending on what material you, material you have and how that's going to affect that. The next thing I want to do is make this a tileable texture. So if we just hit space and we say make it tile, and if I double click on that, it's going to bring up some options. Now, right out of the gate, it's okay, and it could be good for a certain type of texture. The problem we run into here with this with the stack stone is we get some of these irregularities on the sides where it kind of cuts some of this stuff off. So we just have to play with some of these parameters till we get uh, a material that looks like it's kind of tiling well. One thing I found that worked well is turning off uh, spots removal. That kind of helps with the seams. Chrominance influence, if I turn this down, it kind of helps keep everything more uniform so we don't have anything that sticks out crazy when uh, tiling. Same kind of deal with this slider here. Starts kind of normalizing everything, which is what we want. Now mask contrast, this kind of, as you see, blurs those lines. 
but then we can sometimes get some ghosting that happens here on the sides where it's picking up the texture underneath. So not always a good thing to use, but again, it could just be for your project or your material. And Threshold kind of brings some of this stuff inward and outward. Again, just trying to find a spot that looks well with tiling. So some of that looks okay. Another thing we can play with is the height. So again, this maximum and minimum, what it's kind of looking at to get this texture looking pretty uniform. So I kind of liked it at maximum. Now that we have the base and we have it tiled, we need to start making adjustments uh, to this and kind of play with some of the normal mapping, the height information since a lot of this has changed. What I'm gonna do is change to another view or another mesh that we can do this on to kind of help us visualize this, this a little better. So if I go to viewer settings, we're gonna say mesh, and I'm gonna say um, rounded cylinder. And I like this again, cause this is kind of gonna be more of how we're gonna view the texture when we're in max. So again, it does look pretty good. Let's see if we can get it or push it a little further. So I'm gonna hit space on the keyboard and we're gonna go just to adjustment here. Now the cool thing about this node is it allows us to adjust the individual parameters of a material, like the albedo, roughness, normal height, yada, yada, yada. So height, I like to start with that, and then that kind of spills into ambient occlusion and normal as a substance, kind of, a substance designer kind of does. So this allows us to kind of play with a slider that controls the height information and some of the macro and micro details. And again, this is something that we just kind of, kind of play with and get it to our likings. There's no rhyme or reason on or incorrect or correct way to do this. Again, it's just kind of what you end up liking. And once we kind of get it to where we want it, I like this apply modification to normal. This will actually take the height information that we ended up plugging in through this adjustment layer and piping it into the normal, kind of helping that along. And I like to do the same thing for ambient inclusion as well. Kind of fixes that out based off the height information that we have. All right, so this is looking kind of cool. We can move around the environment holding shift and clicking on the right mouse button and kind of just take a look at some of that height information. Now, if we have too much lighting information in this image, similar to what we have, we wanna use a D-lighter. So if I hit uh, space on the keyboard here and say D-lighter, I'm actually gonna have tossed this between the adjustment layer and the make it tile advanced. If I drop it down in there, this will kind of help us get a more even texture without lighting information from the image that we took. All right, one last thing I kind of want to play with here under adjustments in the albedo is we can add some uh, sharpening effect to the image, brings out some more of those micro details in the albedo, and then also want to change or bring down the saturation because I don't like how warm that last one was. Now you could also, if I turn this back up, play with the hue and kind of get it to somewhere that you want, uh, a color that you wanted. But again, I'm just going to kind of drop this down. We're going to get something close to what we had, which was like kind of like a tan color here. And then we can adjust how much of these sliders we play with kind of bringing back into the material. So you have a little more of a slight control in there. Great. So now that we got our material created here in Alchemist, let's go ahead and save this out. So we're going to say save material. It's going to ask us for the name. So I'll just say stack stone. And if we have multiple collections in the library, we can add them to a specific collection like all of our wood or all of our stone. But I'm just going to leave it here and we'll say save. And there you have it. Now we have our material here that we have saved forever, and we can use this material to blend with other materials later on down the pipeline if need be. One other thing I wanted to show you guys is the way to get color variations from imagery that we have or reference images. So if we click Inspire, since we already have this stack stone material selected, if we didn't, it would ask us to import one over. So we just would grab this and drag that over. But it asks for image input. Now let me show you guys here. If I get one of my reference images, for instance, this uh, lobby setup that we're going to be kind of playing with, I can drag this image into the slot here and it'll give us colors kind of based upon the colors extracted from that image. So drag that in there, gives us our variations here. And we have uh, four different colors that it's selected and we can get a material in these colors based upon this imagery. So if I click one preset per extracted color and we say generate variations, it starts to populate our materials in the different colors that we've selected. Now, once that's done kind of processing, see it's selected one of these, we can click on another and it updates the viewport uh, with that new color. So this is a great way to get tones and feels of our reference images that we have to make sure that everything kind of feels and stays cohesive. So I kind of like this last one. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And let's say, yep, this is the image that we want. 
or the material that we want to use in our lobby. To extract this material, we're going to go to the very right and we're going to say export and then export current view. Now we can save this in a couple different formats. What I'm going to show you guys today is using this SBSAR file within 3ds Max using the Substance plugin. You could also do JPEGs and do something like a normal material creation with those in a PBR workflow, but I want to show you guys how to use these files. These are pretty cool. So we're just going to choose our path on where we're going to save this. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we need to choose what the name of the file is going to be. We can say stack stone brown. Okay. And we're going to click export. And you'll see kind of in the upper right, this progress bar starts to go and we can get it imported into 3ds Max. So let me jump back over to Max and we'll show you guys how to use this file. Okay. We're back into Max here. Let's go ahead and use that exported file out of Alchemist and set up a material here in Max using uh, the Corona Render Engine. If you haven't already, go to Adobe's website and they have a Substance for Max plugin. If you install it, you get this little tab up top and this is what we're going to use uh, to again do a Substance to Corona kind of material creation. First thing we need to do is go into our Material Slate Editor. We're going to grab a Substance node. So we can just type it in the top here, S-U-B, S-T, there we go. Drag this over. And this is what reads the material that we exported. So we're going to say load substance. And if I path it here, textures, alchemist, stack stone, here we go. It reads that substance material that we created in Alchemist. Now, the first thing it does is it defaults automatically to a 512 resolution. We can just in increase that resolution pretty easily, drop it up to something like 2048. Now, I wouldn't go crazy with these textures and do like 8K on everything, as this is kind of going to increase the amount of RAM that's needed to render these. So we want to be cognizant of where this wall is going to be in the image. If it's up real close, we want kind of a higher resolution. If it's farther away, we can get away with a lower resolution. So I find that through some testing, 2048 is good. But if we want to adjust this default setting, we can go to Substance up at top and click Substance Settings. And we have our default import resolution here. And then also too, one thing I want to note is if you guys are on a desktop with a little more RAM, in increase your memory budget just to give Substance a little more breathing room when trying to load these. And we'll just say apply. Now, this is a Substance node. It's not a material yet. Really easy though. Little workflow on how to get this set up for Corona. So we're going to have this node selected and we're going to say Substance, Substance to Corona. And it automatically pipes everything out for us, which is really cool. I know sometimes there's a little bit of confusion on which maps are linear, which is not, but we don't have to worry about any of that with this little plugin. So we're going to click on our material. We're going to have our wall. One thing I do want to note is I did do a UV unwrap on this back wall because I want the stack stone to kind of curve around the corner and look like it's continued around that corner rather than just cutting off if we had like a box map or something on it. So to get this applied, we're just going to right click and say assign material to selection. Pretty easy stuff. And then if we don't see it in our viewport, but we want to, we can right click and say uh, show shaded material in viewport. But that's it just to get everything set up. It's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and get into some interactive rendering here real quick, just to take a look at this material. Okay, I'm just going to do a little region render so it updates. One cool thing I really like is it has displacement already kind of set up in the material itself. So let's go ahead and turn some of that on. So if I go back, we'll double click on the material, the Corona material node, not the substance one. And I'm going to go ahead and crank this displacement up to something like three. Now, sometimes it might take a second to load the texture. We might have to start IPR again, but it looks like it's doing okay with it. Cool. Crank this up a little more just to kind of push this so you guys can kind of see this. Awesome. So cool. Then we can start seeing the, the edge here kind of start to poke out. It's catching some light from an IES that I have above. So very quickly, you guys can see how we can go from just a straight image that we have as a reference to a material in literally minutes and get it piped into Max using the Substance plugin. So let's jump back over to Alchemist and I'll show you guys how to create some more materials just using a blend of substance source materials.